why should you be wearing a mask right now? This is a very contentious for whatever reason topic. People say that it is uh, hampering their freedom, that they shouldn't be forced to wear a mask for this long, that it doesn't do anything, or that doctors said it didn't do anything and then you should wear it, then you shouldn't wear it, and I don't know which mask to wear. Let's try to sort this out. And I would like to try to sort this out, like I usually do, with some graphs. So here's me wearing a face mask. Now I want to get at a couple of misconceptions here because I already see in the chat that there's a lot of people with a lot of different opinions, some political ones, which again, I don't know why, but we'll get into that. So why should you wear a mask? Well, first of all, let's get one thing straight. What the current recommendation is for people to wear cloth masks, even if they're just like bandanas, is to prevent a certain kind of transmission. These masks are not supposed to prevent ingress, as it's called, ingress of air. So these masks are not specifically tasked with preventing particulates from going through the fibers and into your respiratory tract and infecting you. You have to have certified masks with very tight fits. This is what our medical professional, medical professionals, doctors and nurses and, uh, and responders are wearing. And they, they are highly specialized equipment. What the recommendation says is that we want to be wearing any kind of cloth mask, even a bandana, because what they are trying to prevent is not ingress of particulates, but egress. So egress, meaning uh, particulates escaping from us. And just because of our biology, when we cough, when we sneeze, when we might be shedding virus, as it's called in epidemiology, this virus is usually attached or contained in like water vapor and water droplets and cough droplets and blah, 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 blah. And so even not medical grade cloth with, uh, you know, small, not super small pore size can cut down on this sort of egress from people. And this is especially important because with this pandemic specifically, you can be very infectious without showing any symptoms for a long time. And so when you're wearing a mask, you're preventing that possible transmission even when you don't feel sick. So why is this so important? Well, let's get to this symbol graph over here. So what you're seeing is the effectiveness on the x-axis of the mask. And then on the y-axis, you're seeing how many people wear masks. Now these lines that you're seeing, there we go, these lines that you're seeing are actually that uh, R naught value that you may have heard talked about in the news and on social media. So R naught is just a statistical way of saying the transmission rate. So if it's above one, then the average infected person will go on to infect on average more than one person, that the transmission will spread. And if R naught is under one, then there's a good chance, and as it gets closer and closer to zero, it's even better chance, there's a good chance that the virus will die out and there won't be a transmission and it won't be something like a pandemic. So what you're looking at here, this is the line right here where you'd want to be. You'd want to be in the blue zone and underneath this R naught of one. So the mask, even the cloth mask, to prevent this egress, just putting a bandana over your face has been shown to be around 60% percent effective or better depending on what you're wearing so now let's look at the graph let's look at the data and let's go up Oop, let's go up from 60 percent so it looks like around 60 to 70 percent of the population so if 60 to 70 percent of the population were just wearing even simple cloth masks we would bring this under the r naught of one and we would as the top of the graph says the rate of transmission can entirely stop. I, I'm not making up numbers here. This is entirely possible. In, on the completely theoretical side, if we all were perfectly isolated, this entire thing would evaporate in two weeks. Isn't that crazy? But because we can't do that, this is one way to get at that, to lower the transition rate and wearing a mask, even if you don't feel sick, especially if you don't feel sick, when you're going out and you're interacting with people, which you shouldn't really be, you should be cutting back on that too, that helps everyone. Now, I see people in the chat, even here, saying, well, you know, we have to get the herd immunity up, and this is, um, you know, kind of trespassing on my personal freedom, and that's true, it is. 
Unfortunately, you all signed up for a society. If we want to live as human beings in large societies, we have to follow and acknowledge our own biology, and there are things that you give up when you enter a society, there are rules, and public health is one of those rules. You can't just, you know, poison the water supply or something like that. Well, that prevents my personal freedom from putting poison in stuff. Well, yes, technically it does, but <laughs> we are looking out for everyone in a society. And I know that's, a, that's kind of a bombastic example and it's not really fair, but we... How about a different one? So this kind of affects the argument, what price do we put on human life? I see people saying, just open it all up, everyone's going to get it, just have everyone get it all at once, we'll get the herd immunity up, and whatever happens is not going to be as bad as the economic cost. So that is putting a price tag on human life, and it sounds abhorrent, but it's something we do as a society, again, every day. For example, if we made the speed limit one mile per hour for everyone everywhere, there would be less, less deaths on the road each year. But we have decided as a society that the inconvenience of getting everywhere very slowly and the possible economic impact of that is more important than 40,000 deaths on the road. Love it or hate it, it's an ethical uh, decision that we made as a society. And so now we're making the same kind of decision here. But I say, there's an economic cost, yes. But if we all wear masks and we follow these guidelines... The better we do so, the quicker this all ends. And if trampling on your perceived personal freedom to not wear a mask in public can be achieved as simply as just asking you to wear a bandana over your nose and mouth, then your conception of what is truly free and patriotic in my mind is a bit warped. This is something so easy that everyone can do. You just put your shirt over your face. Um, I know it's a hassle, but a lot of things are a hassle. We live in society, we take care of each other, and that's why, and I got the graph to back me up, you should always wear a mask, at least for now.